This sode would not be possible without the support of our listeners, patrons, and sponsors. If you'd like to find out more about supporting the 3-Bit Gamer Show, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash 3BG. And a major shout-out goes out to our boss-level patrons, Christopher, Patrick, and Skyler. Oh, another recording night. How you guys holding up? I'm doing okay. Excited for this long weekend, though. Yeah, same. You know, I think we're going to uh, go. Hey, wait. It's my turn now. Oh, I didn't know we were taking turns. Yeah, still my turn. Uh, okay, so JD says he's, uh, you know, doing okay. Uh, I'm going to counter out with, uh, I- I'm doing really amazing. What is going on? I think I know. Aaron's been at SaltCon all weekend, and he's still in board game mode. Bam! I'm playing the podcast card, and I think that puts me up front. Up front of what? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, I'm taking that back. Um, I, I think I'm going to play the dice card and roll the Dice of Destiny. We usually do that at, at the end? JD, stop. Listen, I've seen this before. You need to just let it run its course. Draw three cards, roll the blue dice, and then I push my dragon into the blast radius of the fire mountain so I can use the wizard to take over the final cones and BAM! That's the game, boys! Woo! You just logged into the three bit gamer show. Yahtzee! Camera show. I'm JD. This is Peterson. Man, Dan, Ren. <laughs> sometimes Aaron got sometimes the Sometimes we write a roll for somebody when we're writing these skits, and it's just the perfect roll. <laughs> I felt like Aaron was playing a game. I was like, this game sounds pretty fun. That he's getting pretty into it. <laughs> this is just second nature. Cards. This is how he, he he prefers to communicate. That's how I roll. That's right. <laughs> Live from the Three Big Gamer Show. The news. All right, our news this week, as with all weeks, is brought to us by Crave Cookies. Crave, the one and only. As far as I know, as far as I know, the only cookie shop in Utah. Uh, um, I think that's right. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I, think, I think they all burned yeah. down. Uh, right. Wait, JD, I went to another Crave location this week. That's four for me. I've been to four Crave locations. So so there's only four cookie shops in all of Utah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. They're all called Crave. If you want to. Dude, fuck, fuck. I can't talk anymore. I got to get into the cookies of the week. I know that they are the only cookie restaurant in the state that has a rotating menu. They have the better than sex cookie, which I love. Oh, so classic. Death by Red Velvet, which is it's good, but. Red Velvet is so chocolatey to me. But what the fuck is this one? This one's new. The chocolate turtle. Do you see this one, Peterson? Do you see that? That that milk chocolate on top. So brown sugar dough, candied pecans, caramel stuffing, (laughs) semi-sweet chocolate chunks, and melted milk chocolate. So ridiculous. Holy shit. The Big Debbie. Decadent. Which is his version of the Little Debbie uh, uh, oatmeal snack cake. The Oreo cheesecake, which is a warm cookie. You'd think that'd be cold. Hmm. Cookies and cream dough, crushed Oreo, cheesecake filling, white chocolate drizzle, and crushed Oreo. You and can tell course, it's a warm cookie chip. based on the picture. That person's hand is like covered in <laughs> goo. Yeah, usually the hands are a little cleaner. That hand is, is there goopy. A... Is there a better name that we can? Is there a way we can make this turtle cookie more like that scene in the office where Michael's screaming, "Where are the turtles?" <sighs> How was where my mind went? I mean, I just immediately thought of the candy, but uh, yeah, I was I just think thinking that's about where that we're scene going. In the office. There's nothing there, though. Yeah, I don't know if mm, we'll I don't know if we're going to get there. I don't have to replay that scene though. Oh God, I just have it burning in my memory. Okay, so go to. CraveCookies.com, check out their menu, or go to any number Crave Cookies location. This is the long con. We've been playing the long game with you guys. If you guys have been with us this whole time, you've been salivating over this, but you're like, I'm not going to drive all the way to Dude, I can't get all the way to Midvale. 
I'm like, I live up north. I live like two hours away from there. And all of a sudden, the cookie shop we've been talking about for two years, it's just coming to you. Dude, we're, we're just playing the long game. We're here for it. There's one in Riverdale. Holy shit. Yeah, dude, Aaron, See? that's where I went this weekend. It's up by it's us. It's brand new, yeah. Dude, it's brand new. It's, it's yeah, it's that's good. Awesome. We're a cutting edge podcast, at least in terms of snack franchising. We're brand makers, you guys. Brand makers. That's tight. That's that. That's that's the new way. We're not a podcast. We're a brand making. Where would Xbox Game media. Pass be without yeah, us? Higher. Well, they would have about half the subscribers they currently do. Phil Spencer seems confident that the Activision acquisition will go through. Say it with me, everybody. How fun is that? Activision acquisition. Activision it's gotta acquisition. Be, it Activision makes me act, feel act. like we have to write a musical at the end of this year. Oh gosh. That's what right. happens with 2022. We write an entire fucking musical. Deck. All right, I'll put this out to our listeners. Would you yes. guys be okay with us taking like an entire month off the podcast if we come back with a full fucking Hamilton scale <laughs> musical about <laughs> summing up the year? Would you be like, all right, you guys, that's okay. That was worth like, it. <laughs> like with the intermission and everything? Of course. Everything. Dude, oh. I'm talking like probably six to eight songs on either end. <laughs> At least eight hours. Okay. It's a lot of singing for Trent. (laughs) Trent's going to have to hard carry this whole fucking musical. (laughs) We'll do a lot of backup vocals, but it's a, this is the Trent song. I just uh, can't wait for Activision acquisition. That is my favorite song. Yes. uh, I wrote that down because I like it so much. It's so good. What's even the story about? I don't even know. This was an interview with Emily Chang from, uh, Bloomberg Studio 1.0, whatever the hell that is, uh, with Phil Spencer, um, who's the head of Xbox over at Microsoft. <laughs> Some quotes from Phil Spencer that I found interesting or amusing. Uh, quote, I've never done a $70 billion deal, so I don't know what my confidence means. I will say the discussions we've been having seem positive. Have you ever seen bets more hedged? <laughs> Dude, I would love it if he... <clears throat> okay, what if the story was Phil Spencer comes in and he is not confident that this merger will go through. <laughs> He's like, wow, man. I don't know. I sweat. I'll, I'm sweating through my pants right now. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> I've never done an acquisition this size before. And I actually scares me. Don't scared shitless. Happen. Dude, I go see my therapist twice a day now. I am so pumped full of medications. Like, I feel like I'm walking <laughs> underwater. There's I don't know what's going to fucking plummets. happen. <laughs> yeah, I went I'm to the doctor. The he said I had the same heart heart pressure, the same blood pressure and heart rate of like a sixty year old air traffic controller. <laughs> I went on to DraftKings and I, you know, bid on the underdog. You know, <laughs> dude, this is no. yeah. I dude, like Phil Spencer's just like he's like yeah, he's like going well. He um and then uh, the he they asked him about the unions. Uh, Emily Chang asked him about uh, the fact that they're acquiring Activision, which has studios that are now unionized in the the story of this and uh he says quote i've never run an organization that has unions in it but what can i say what i can say in working through this is we recognize workers needs to feel safe and heard and compensated fairly in order to do great work so he seems like union positive and then they get after him about the uh idea of games being made exclusively because that's the whole crux of this whole argument against the acquisition the activision acquisition Mm -hmm. and he says uh he's like Dude, I don't think that's going to be a problem. He's like, I think we're just going to have games cross platform everything. And he's like pushing for it. So I, I guess I even saw a story that was like Xbox is Microsoft is essentially throwing PlayStation a bone by letting them have Call of Duty for at least a few more years. I yep. I don't yeah. think they care as much as no. I think PlayStation's freaking out. And Microsoft is like, Look, Dude, you can just keep it. It's whatever. Fine. Yeah. They, but they might take Diablo, though. No, here's That's... my prediction. Here's well, they are going to have Diablo. Well, they'll uh, have it on Game Pass. Pass. Yeah. Here's my and prediction, Windows though. Phones. They yeah. use Call of Duty to pressure uh, PlayStation into allowing Game Pass onto their model onto PlayStation. So they'll use There's Call no of way. They're, the leverage. Yeah. They're going to do it. Their game service would have to fail so spectacularly for so long before they would accept that, I think. I think I I, I think you're right point. that I don't think Microsoft is considering Sony co- the same level of competition that Sony is. Um and Phil Spencer seems just like like whatever. 
He's like, yeah, it's all good. Like, whatever. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Guys, um, I have never felt better about this acquisition. I do I like Phil that's Spencer? That's not mine. I, dude, it's weird. <laughs> I'm like, it's really challenging the notion that I, I have in my head that all gaming uh, executives are bad, just inherently. I don't know. Phil Spencer, I'm like... And they don't. It's... They don't play a very good villain. I'll say that they have not been playing the villain part that we typically see from these uh, high, high, high level executives. Microsoft has not been playing that part, so I can't wait for them to for all of the uh, allegations to come out in the next couple of years against Microsoft. But yeah, you know, I think he's they're... playing with like the confidence of like a mafia boss, dude. <laughs> Yeah, like he that's just, true. He, he has the he has the capital to play it this cool. It's alarming. Like he feels so confident because he's like looking at his Game Pass numbers. He's looking at the trajectory of just Xbox and Xbox gaming in general, and he's just like, "Dude, I don't need to fight." This acquisition well, goes through. It doesn't. I don't give a fuck. I'm still well, making it's, so much money. It, well, it's crazy if you think about it, because how how long have I had Game Pass? It's oh been. Oh, God, I've had it for years. I don't even think about it anymore. It's been at least five or six years for me. Do we even pay? How much do we pay for it? Because you do you still just get the PC version? No, no, I think I'm 15 bucks a month. And like, so it, here's it. the thing. I have given Xbox so much money. Oh, yeah. In the last five, six, seven years that I would never have given. I would have never bought that much worth of games through Xbox. No. Uh, and I've given them so much money. And then I don't even feel bad. I don't even care because it's like I've got access they gave to everything up on the digital storefront. I think that's what that was. Is they're like, we're not going to compete with Steam. No one will ever prefer to buy their games on our platform, period. They don't care to. Yeah, but, I, I've, I haven't yeah. looked to buy a game on the Xbox for like years and years and years. That's not yeah, a that's thing what I do. Netflix didn't try to compete with, you know, the video stores. <laughs> Netflix was like, no, we'll do it our own thing. No one wants you don't want to own any of this stuff. You just want to check out a bunch of shit you might not otherwise buy. That's what we're here for. So, yeah, I think uh, I don't blame him for being uber confident, although. A UK government watchdog has recommended an in-depth investigation into the Activision acquisition. Oh, they moved from Brazil to the UK, it sounds like. The UK's, we'll see, the investigation is just getting underway, but I can't imagine things will be as fun here as they were in Brazil. There's just something different. I mean, it's a different season in Brazil. It's spring. I th I, I, that, yes, the, I think that plays a, a big part into the amount of information they spilled about uh yeah. about their company just in a Brazil different for a some different reason. a literal different climate um but in the UK this is the UK's competition and market authority the CMA uh they came out with their first investigation results into the D in the Activision acquisition they said quote in this in this finding it could harm rivals including recent and future entrants into gaming by refusing them access to Activision Blizzard games or providing access on much worse terms. That second part is very important uh, because they can say, oh, we're providing access on both sides, like across the board, but they could, you know, do any number of things. Uh, even things like, you know, for PlayStation games, they don't include dedicated servers for certain games. Um, let's see. Another quote, Microsoft could leverage Activision Blizzard's games together with Microsoft's strengths across cl console cloud and pc operating systems to damage competition in the nascent market for cloud gaming services these guys seem to know their shit um they looked this over and they're like well microsoft owns cloud gaming they're saying what we've been saying for years and they're like that's fucking dangerous that's weird so microsoft they gave microsoft and activision blizzard five days to submit responses to prevent a phase two investigation that was on the 1st of September. Uh, so if you're listening to this podcast, it's uh, on a release date. It's the 5th. So they have one or two days remaining to respond. Uh, but I don't think that they... I think five days. When you give someone five days to respond, you're like, dude, phase two is coming. That's real serious. And and it's over a three-day weekend, uh, like a government holiday. 
I yeah, I think that they knew that they were going into a deeper uh, investigation in the UK. Microsoft's uh, president, Brad Smith, who we always forget to talk about. Brad Smith just flies under the name radar with a name like that. can't remember that name. Uh, He provided a statement to IGN responding. So I guess they responded to IGN. Quote, we're ready to work with the CMA on next steps and address any of its concerns. Sony, as the industry leader, says that it is worried about Call of Duty, but we're, we've are we said we're committed to making the same game available the same day on both Xbox and PlayStation. We want people to have more access to games, not less. So that jives with what Phil Spencer is saying. They um, have been saying that line for years and years now, so that does I don't track. That's the main concern, though. It's like you own cloud gaming and now you own... Uh, Activision Blizzard, one of the largest gaming publishers in the world of some of the largest titles and, and IPs in gaming. And uh, that's just like a lot. It just seems like a lot. Maybe you guys shouldn't own so much. So now we're watching the they're, they're writing Brazil. That, uh, they're writing these, uh, these emails to them on their Windows computer with Microsoft Outlook. <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, it just feels weird and you guys own everything. (laughs) I don't know about that. Sony has announced an even fancier, more expensive version of the PlayStation 5 controller, just in case you have too much money. Burning that hole in your pocket. Dude, this is kind of cool. I guess it seems a little slow considering these PlayStation Sony, they're like PlayStation owns the the cool controller market. Yeah, they have a corner on it. But if you guys uh, were aware, Xbox has had a pro controller, a very fancy controller with all sorts of triggers and paddles and what's it's and girly wigs and dooley who's girly. Wigs. They've had that for like yeah. five plus years and it's very expensive. What is it? 150 Peterson? 150. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is the response to that. Just coming a little late. They unveiled it at Gamescom last week. It's called the DualSense Edge controller, and it's got customized controllers, uh, controls, back buttons, changeable stick caps like the joysticks and on controller interface. So like you can take half of this thing apart, basically, and swap pieces and parts with one of another to customize it to how you I want do it. I like that. Pro esports players I know like this type of stuff. I remember when I was covering peripherals at at a CES one year, I saw some cool controllers that were not dissimilar to this that you could add weights to because certain gamers want like a ex- very specific weight uh, in their controller. And that's kind of that's I don't know, like it seems a little get. hardcore. I don't Isn't know. That nuts. Man. So this is this is not without precedent, but it is cool to see Sony actually getting in it directly. Um, I don't know who the fuck wants one of these. The controllers are already so cool. Who needs this? How, how much are we looking PS- for? Huh? How, how much, how much are we looking at? Oh God, I don't even know. Did you even say it's gonna be? Uh, it's gotta be one fifty at least. One fifty. Yeah. I would be shocked if they release the price of this because they haven't even released the price on any of the <laughs> PSVR two stuff. Yeah, yeah. They don't even like. Oh, cost. Well, we don't need to talk about cost. Don't <laughs> if you want gonna... it, you'll get it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it's like going to be free. I think it's kind of weird. Yeah. Hmm. Um. But yeah. So that's the. I don't know. So don't so know. being it, I mean, because you said you can change out the sticks, right? Yeah. Which is super cool because I feel like those get worn out pretty easily. I have some like uh, just rubber caps that you put over the top. Yeah, they kind of give you some extra grip and stuff like that, but those have worn off already. And then you just have to replace those. Yeah, yeah. no, this is kind of cool because um, you could t- get different. Because some people like different grips that are. Um, some people actually prefer joysticks that are not concave but convex, so they go out like they they. Oh sure. Yeah, yeah and so you could because like was it well what was the um the PlayStation Two had that type of like. Uh, rubber. I, think I prefer that over. Yeah, the but now they're game. all con. They're all convex. Or concave, sorry. Yeah. They're all concave now. Like you they're don't have innies. an option. Innies and outies. They're innies and outies. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm saying it wrong. They're all innies. Um, right they're now. all innies now, I aren't they? Like I'm all like innies. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I believe so. I know ours it's are abnormal to be Audi to an Audi, but I have a PS five or PS two. He's going to get it. 
I know, man, oh my gosh, look at that closet. Hey, look, that is ridiculous. The, what does he have in there? We can't hear you. JD and the PS2 out. both have Audis. Yeah, yeah, they have an Audi. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think then, there's a special place where the Audis go. <clears throat> yeah, dude. So yep. that's yeah, where I think you, you could probably put an Audi on your PS5 controller. Innies and Audis, folks. Innies and Audis. Hmm. Chinese gaming giant Tencent is targeting $14.5 billion in divestments this year. That is, we're going to sell this and get some cash back. Divesting uh, they own too much. Billion. Yeah, they're soft targeting 100 billion yuan of, of their $88 billion listed equity portfolio. Uh, so fourteen. And a half billion of their eighty-eight billion dollar. That is not a small amount. Um, that is a considerable chunk of their portfolio that they're just selling. Yeah, they haven't talked directly. There was like one food company that they're divesting from. Man, I'd hate to be that food company. It's kind of a black <laughs> mark on your record. The only one they call out is like these guys. They we, we can get rid of those guys. Anymore. You know, it's not going to hurt us. Yeah, they're not gonna, not gonna, not going to be owned by us anymore. Do you think so, this is just a? a a staying afloat strategy for them yep. because they they need, they yep. need the cash to need c- cash. continue to operate. I think with the plan of kicking the can down the hill, hoping that down mm-hmm. the road, hoping that uh, China will open it up, open game development up a little bit more for them to continue to develop and make money again. Yeah, and they've said that sales, what they will sell beyond this for food company is going to depend on market conditions and internal targets. So what you're saying, can't imagine what market conditions are going to influence the sales probably of their gaming division. I think yeah. that's what they're doing. If you're staying afloat and there is a, a part of your company, your equity portfolio that's been kneecapped by your own government, well, you can just toss that out. It's bleeding right now. So why do you need it? Sell it back, get the cash. Um, And this is why we've been following this story for fucking, what, three years now? Everyone's like, God, why do they shut up about Tencent? Why do you keep talking about video game companies buying other video game companies? Who gives a fuck? This is why. Because now you have a Chinese gaming company who like Peterson mentioned, is trying to stay afloat, unloading gaming companies they don't give a flying fuck about anymore. Yeah. They're just they're just selling them off. They don't care to the highest bidder, to whoever, because they're divesting, and that's what you do. And so a lot of these gaming studios just end up being like passed around, and it could be okay. It could work out. But I would say more often than not, it doesn't. So uh, we'll follow what they divest in, if there are any gaming companies, because, again, that's all speculation. Um, but there is going to be that is a lot. Fourteen and a half billion is not a small amount. Ten cent breaking up the crew. <laughs> the old ten cent club. Uh, speaking of ten cent, I had a quick other story, and this is just a tangential story. But the I I noticed them. Pokemon Company is suing several Chinese companies. Oh baby, six to be exact. Six Chinese companies, including Ten Cent. Like uh, in China, Tina.com, NetEase.com. Yes, for copyright infringement and unfair competitive behavior because they are essentially have made Pokemon clones. And they specifically mention one called Pocket Monster Reissue. It's a mobile game. So, and, and it said most of the monsters in it are original, but some of them are straight up copies. Uh, So they're suing them. But my favorite part of this is they are claiming over 72 million in damages. Fine. But they're demanding public apologies on social media platforms, gaming websites and app stores. Incredible. China (laughs) is not going to apologize to Japan. I think that's kind of where we're at. They I think they will be ordered to not apologize because Um, this is incredible. So yeah, I think I can't even think of the precedent set. You are a judge in a Chinese copyright court and you're going to set the precedent that foreign companies can sue Chinese companies for copyright infringement. For knockoffs. That is all Chinese courts will do for the next (laughs) 
thousand years. <laughs> that is what they will exist to no. do. China is to process all the copyright claims. <laughs> Who is going to set that precedent? You lunatics! You absolute morons! Also, the what are you like, thinking? You are. You, let's see. You have been fined seventy-two million dollars. Uh, also, you have to go on TikTok and say I'm sorry publicly yeah. say how we've sorry lowered you your are. Social credit score. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. I just thought this was crazy. What is like, that? What's the play here? Are they just trying to? make it public this is never going to go anywhere Are, everyone knows it's a pokemon knockoff i don't think that's what people care about Can i don't know. nominate this for a blursty this is, is even we, does it rise to the occasion of a blurst decision blursty we do have a japanese version of the blursties so uh yeah we could do it we could do the blursties okay the j blursties <laughs> the j blursties Ten cent and Tony, Tony, Tony Try that again. <laughs> Yo, Tony. Ten cent and Sony Interactive Entertainment have collectively acquired thirty percent of From Software. So you're like JD. You like to talk about how smart you are, and you're talking about how ten cents going to divest from all these video game companies. Well, they just spent they just spent one hundred twenty million dollars. On uh oh wait no I'm sorry 138 million dollars on 16 percent of From Software this is 10 cent holding subsidiary Six Joy Hong Kong so I think when we're talking about divestment I think we're talking about them full scale getting rid of companies so this is a little different so, because yeah, this is a subsidiary cent- making independent moves this is them owning a portion of a, a company that is doing their own thing. It's- yeah, and this company, Loophole. mind you, is blowing up. And you're following uh, on the coattails of Sony, which you can comfortably invest next to Sony. If Sony Interactive comes to you and says, hey, you want to match an investment in this company that we're making? You just do that. You just fucking do it. All so right. Sony bought 1,500 shares for $120 million. Six Joy bought 1,700 shares for $140 million. Uh, From Software uh, released a big PR statement that was basically like, we love money. (laughs) This is so cool. This is why we exist. We love spending money. We love having money to spend. Now we have a lot of money, so we are happy. (laughs) Uh, They said they plan to spend the money. George R. R. Martin's uh, over here like, hey, can I get in on uh, George R. R. Martin's like, hey, I also like money. Hate writing, <laughs> like sitting in rooms and talking, though. Um, writing is a lot of work. So From Software is going to use this money to self-publish a slate of new games uh, on top of the. Did you know this? I looked up how many uh, sale, how many copies they've sold of Elden Ring. And if you times that by like 60 bucks for a general thing, it's probably quite a bit more considering where else how it's costs everywhere so much more outside of the US. Uh they made like a billion dollars off Elden Ring. Did you know that? Like Dude, a billion. It, it was oh, huge. Whoa. And like And that's that huge. came out this fucking year. Everyone keeps forgetting. That came out like a couple months ago. Yeah. Um so Elden Ring is absolutely massive. They Killed just it. raked in a billion. Honestly, and then these it guys... did deserve it though. Like I didn't oh. hear bad press about no. Elden Ring. Yeah. I heard only great. good things. And so now these two giant companies are now stepping in to put it up a combined $260 million uh, in your company for 30%, a 30% stake. Um, Things are which going honestly well. seems like a pretty low valuation software. now that I look at the sale of Elden Ring. Well, it's it's just, you know, it's not they don't own it, right? They don't own from software. They just have a stake in it now. Yeah, so, but doesn't that imply at that thirty percent stake with the two hundred and sixty million dollars? Essentially, doesn't that imply that they're worth somewhere in the order of like eight hundred million dollars, S- which is less than the sales they made on a game over half a year? I just feel like maybe I'm screwing up the valuation somehow. Um, well, yeah. So I don't think your valuation is equal to your sales, though, especially in the video game market. Absolutely, it's not a. It's not a. It's not a games as a service game, right? Most people have who bought mm-hmm. it have played it and they're done, right? People play it and you're kind of done playing it. There's no yeah. more income from 
that one game. So it's all about the next game. So I think video game companies are, if they're not doing these games as a service games, they're in a weird uh, position in terms of valuation because how do you va- put a value on the potential next game? Yeah, because Elden Ring 2, theoretically, right. wouldn't come out for, what, three, four years? At, uh, at so the you're very absolutely right. earliest. <laughs> so you amortize that that like billion dollars over however the length. Yeah. Okay, so that makes a lot more sense. Okay, thanks for walking me through that. Okay, so uh, just so you guys remember, if you're like, oh, From Software made Elden Ring, you also might remember they made Dark Souls. Yes. They also made Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Uh, and then some older series that we haven't seen many entries in recently is Armored Core and King's Field. With you, this extra input injection of cash, you might see revisiting of those if you guys are fans of those. You might see just totally new IPs, but I feel like From Software is very hot right now. From Software seems like what everyone thought uh CD Projekt Red was everything they thought that CD Projekt Red was from Sw- from software is they are publishing great games they're executing on them regularly they're pushing the envelope in their games well, um, they, like they, they did with Elden Ring their, they know what their their market is though they make hard games yep. that, uh, these fighting games that are hard that are big uh, big worlds I wouldn't be surprised. And I mean, I haven't looked into this at all because these are, you know, this is not my jam in terms of gaming at all. But Mm-mm. the other giant game you didn't mention that they have is Bloodborne. People love oh, Bloodborne. Yeah. And their last entry to that was 2015. Dude, they're due for a Bloodborne. Uh, so they've got, they have a lot of money making potential. So I think this is a good deal, especially hot off the heels of a major hit like Elden this is- Ring. This is very good news if you are a fan of this studio. Yeah. Um, even if you are slightly worried about the ten cent stake, the yeah. Sony stake is, I think, it should give you confidence and a reminder that it isn't directly connected to ten cent because it is Six Joy Hong Kong that made the acquisition. So, I wouldn't say if ten cent even inve- divested in Six Joy they would hang on to this and it wouldn't disrupt the studio or it would be foolish for Tencent to try to be disruptive in this at all because they're doing so well on their own. This is just sit back, let them, let them print money for you type of situation. NetEase has acquired Quantic Dream in an ongoing expansion into the international gaming market. NetEase, another, I think the number two, uh, tech and gaming giant in China. Uh, NetEase is doing what Tencent did recently, and they're making quite a push into the international gaming market. Uh, this is their first studio in Europe, and they have a... This is a 100% acquisition. Um, bought the whole thing, lock, stock, and barrel. This is a formerly independent studio run by, like, one guy. It's, like, 200 people. Um, the terms of the deal weren't disclosed, so we don't know how much they paid. But this guy's like, he's set now, basically. I guarantee you he's just set for life. Uh, The real reason behind this is not because of Quantic Dreams history or past games, Heavy Rain or (laughs) Detroit Become Human, which was met with mixed reviews or even their storied history of a bunch of controversies, you know, like any shitty gaming studio. I think we actually covered it, honestly. Um they're really acquiring it for one thing and one thing only is the Quantic Dreams got their hands on a Star Wars game license called Star Wars Eclipse. Yep. We don't know anything about the game except that Quantic Dream has been struggling to hire people for it, partially because of their reputation uh, as just being a bunch of shitheads. Um, weird how that works. Yeah, it's weird. People don't want to work for you when they hear that working for you is shitty. When you're openly garbage. Wild. Um. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, just to give the full disclosure, because I didn't really look too deeply into this. Uh, Quantic Dream, for their part, I think countersued the media outlets that reported on... Not countersued, they just sued them. The media outlets that were reporting on this harassment or assault or whatever the hell was going on. Um, so they don't think they did anything wrong. I don't fucking know. They never Apparently, do. they got past the mouse 
So they got a Disney license. They got a Star Wars license. So they can't be all that bad. And that's all NetEase wants. NetEase wants to own a piece of that Star Wars pie. And now they got it. Well, that's what all these acquisitions are. I mean, if you're really yep. reading into it, they're acquiring the studio's potential because they want to mm. hey, get ahead of it. Next big if thing. this is the next billion dollar game, yep. uh, if this game makes $500 million, they want a piece of that pie. And so, yeah, they're gambling that uh, Quantic Dream is not going to blow it with this Star Wars license. And Quantic Dream, honestly, this seems like they needed this fucking too because yeah. part of the reason when you're Peterson, if you're having trouble hiring for a job because you have a shitty reputation, what's the one thing you can do to get people in that job? I don't know. <laughs> Give them more money. <laughs> Give them some cash. Offer more money for Offer those more positions. cash to come yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Change, rebrand, and I think that's what your name. I'm pretty sure that's what he said in this press release or whatever. Quantic Dream is like, well, now we can afford to hire up for Star Wars Eclipse. So they needed the money to make the game that they were acquired for in the first place. Yeah, um, probably cost them a ton of money to get the license. Yeah. And just to make it as expensive. Yeah, I and mean, especially if you can't hire employees because they have no interest in working for you. So now <laughs> they have a lot more money. They have this backing. They'll hire up for this job. A bunch of you know, mercenary types that don't give a shit. And we will get a soulless Star Wars game financed by a Chinese studio that's trying to get out from under the grip of their Just what we've government. always wanted. I love this timeline. <laughs> Some Diablo Immortal whales are falling into dreaded orb debt. Orb debt. Ba, ba, ba. No, no. Orb debt. There's I no can't... way to get out of this debt. I mean, you can't just stop playing. Dude, oh, do you think these guys? I get it. We're all dorks. We're all super nerds. But you'd think at some point these developers get embarrassed or cringe a little bit when they name their currency Eclipse Orbs. I don't think they do. They should. Uh, Eternal Orbs. I'm so sorry. Eternal. Eternal Orbs. orbs. That's dorkier. It's Eternal yeah, um, Orbs. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love it when they try to come up with something clever for it. Like, just name it, like, gold or something. Because, like, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. just call it gold. That's, that's or, or call them or orbs. Just orbs. Yeah. Orbs. <laughs> orbs are fine. Coins are fine. Rings are fine. Silver's great. Blue balls. Timely, yeah. appropriate. But, man, <laughs> eternal. Not blue balls. Oh, you orbs. You can't. Sorry. Sorry. Nope. You get a blursty for that. Sapphire orbs. That's what they're called. Oh, my lady, my doth, sapphire orbs are aching. My, <laughs> my lady has given me, has giveth me the sapphire orb. <laughs> the dreaded sapphire orbs are upon me. A pox on your lands. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I forgot what we were talking about. Oh, yeah. So Diablo Immortal, oh, they've yeah, got the these whale. sapphire orbs um, and you can. These are this is the primo currency. This is the this is one of the primary currencies in Diablo Immortal. You want to buff up your character, you need to spend these eternal orbs and you can apparently they're so fucking expensive that yeah. people are going to third party sites to get them because nothing is more trustworthy than just like a sketchy website selling a digital currency in a video game. Like that's that's the website you could trust. Put your credit card info, put your personal info, upload a picture of your driver's license. This feels Standard like a stuff. cyberpunk uh, type of type of storyline. Where yeah, you, dude, you're buying black like market orbs black for your market, video game. Uh, online Eternal currency. <laughs> this is crazy. So guess what? Shocker. A lot of these eternal orbs were not we're not like uh, acquired legally or correctly by these resellers. And so Blizzard does a big old sweep of all these illegitimately gained orbs, illegitimate orbs. Oof. We had an orb counter in here. Illegitimate Is anyone orbs. taking shots uh, for how many times I say orbs? Cause I am sorry for your liver. Yeah. Don't um, do that. So Blizzard's like, nope, we're taking back all the illegitimate orbs 
And it leaves a ton of these guys that have been because these these are the super whales, the people that are trying to spend so much money on this game that they're going to these sketchy sellers to get more orbs. Yeah, Uh, can't get enough. They are the ones that have spent a lot and they are getting negative balances now because there's a screenshot here. This person has negative two point four (laughs) million orb balance. And that would be almost thirty five thousand dollars. So imagine you log into this game that you are you're going so out of your way. You're going to Western. What is that? What is the 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 credit where you go to like the the little machine at 7-Eleven and put cash in it? Oh, gosh. Western yeah, Union is that what it is? You're wiring Western... cash, yes, to these sketchy resellers. You love it so much. These you wake back up one alley morning. deals. You bring a USB stick, okay? <laughs> you take it <laughs> into the point. alley behind the Wendy's. Um, you meet a guy bet who is in a trench coat back there. You make the exchange. He opens and... his trench coat, and all it is is just somewhere to plug in the USB. That's all that he's got there, and you just have to do it. And uh, he's like, OK. And you just sit there awkwardly with your USB, just waiting for him to. And he's like, OK, you're good now. And that's you, you where got, he hands you. That's when he hands you the orbs. The orbs should be in your account. Thank you. And they and then they just walk away and you're like. This is... <laughs> so, so what's going to happen to this dude? He, he owned owes Blizzard, whatever, thirty two thousand dollars. The no, way I would so see it is it's Blizzard's a... like. Okay, if you want to play this game or spend orbs, you're gonna to have to start. You're gonna to have to spend thirty five thousand dollars first before you can buy an orb. Okay, so then they're, they're not gonna to try to recoup the the. I the doubt loss, it. I think right? he's just done. Yeah, no, they're not gonna come for him. I think essentially what it said is they equated it to a soft ban, because until yeah. you have a positive orb balance, um, you can't like join multiplayer stuff. You can't join a clan. You can't oh, do okay. any of that. And so it's a, it's a scarlet band. orb on your chest. You just got you're just like now lonely playing this game after being a revered whale in the world. You are now an outcast. And uh, yeah, you're it's the leprosy of the gaming world is having Dude, a negative. Orb so, balance. It's OK, so <laughs> it's I think it's super funny that this guy uh, it was like uh, in the beginning, it was, it was about twenty dollars uh for 7200 orbs and then it went up to like $50 and then the most recent they went up to $85 per bundle or inflation baby it's, it's okay so everyone. if you're still and this dude bought <laughs> 2500 20 2.5 million orbs at even at $20 I hate this word now. Or, orb. <laughs> yeah, do the math for me, because uh, can you imagine calling your banker and explaining this to him, and he's like, I can, "Are you saying the? Are you saying orb? I, I just want to get this right. You're saying you bought you bought thirty five thousand dollars of fake orbs. That's still seven thousand dollars. Like no, no, no. Still, e- you still spent seven thousand dollars on fake orbs. They're eternal orbs, Larry. Come the fuck on. Are you even listening? And then, I, then the interviewer's like, uh, so are you going to quit or are you going to keep playing? And then uh, the guy says, I, I think I will quit. I think I will quit. Or I, or I'm just going to start a new account. Or I mean, why don't you just go buy a car instead of spending all your money? I got to get this, back into blue this. balls. I got to get gotta back get, into the orb I got to get game. my orbs on. Dude, this led me down this weird rabbit hole of, are the dumb, Diablo man. Immortal <laughs> subreddit, Uh-oh. which, by the way, that's a weird place because who I is a fan imagine. of this game enough to go into the subreddit and like post dog? This place reads like the Wall Street bet subreddit. The amounts of money these people throw around in this game and discuss openly They're like, oh, man, I spent four thousand dollars in orbs just last week. And I think blah, blah, blah. And then people respond to the comment and they're like, yeah, well, this, that and the other. And I'm like, wait, no one's going to address the fact that this motherfucker just openly admitted to spending four K on a mobile game. On and like nobody game. addresses it. It's like totally normal. There's no shaming. It, for, it's for. Oh. It's such a drug, man, because this this like ruins people's lives. People get fired from their jobs. They can't afford to pay any of their bills. And like, what at the, what least the with gambling, there's a chance to earn a little bit of money. This is just you're you're this is throwing it away. Cost. Absolutely. hundred percent. It's just I don't know. Orbs, I, I think folks. it should be somewhat illegal. They're, it's they all orbs. Some kind Dude. of regulation around it. 
I'm there should be a max, it. right? That, that's the way you do it. You, there should be it should be like a monthly max that is very reasonable that you can spend. A company would never do that uh, on their own, but that's where it should be. Like you should no, max yeah, I mean, out to spend. Didn't they ban this kind of crap in like Finland or Holland, other, Belgium? Holland. In Belgium, oh, it is yeah, Belgium. It is banned. Yeah. Good. Yeah, no orbs in Belgium. Capitalism, I guess, right? <laughs> Apparently, Valve has a, quote, lot of games in development, and devs are ramping up their projects, and everyone is peeing their pants after hearing that. This is what we wanted to hear for, what, well, now I'm peeing my pants. From Valve. Years. Yeah. Peterson's just like a sympathetic peer. Someone else is peeing their pants, just like a baby crying. He's peeing his pants. Are we peeing pants? Bro. <laughs> I'm bro, already there, I am bro. in. I am sitting in a, on a towel right now. Let's do this. The only thing stopping me from peeing my pants at any given moment is that it's culturally unacceptable. But it's the suggestion alone is enough for him to override if that. We're doing it. I'm, I am in. Oh, I'm peeing my pants right now. Everybody that's I'm listening, feel free. No social pressure at all, but like pee your pants. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Valve is pretty cool. Uh, I like that they basically spent the last 15, 20 years doing nothing but working on Steam. And it's been great for them. And then they made Half-Life Alex, and everyone's like, this is the best drug ever. Thank you so much. Even though it cost me a thousand dollars to play it, I will play it and love it and gush about it. And they're like, Oh, you guys will play a thousand dollars to pay games we make? Well, shit, maybe we'll make two. So Valve might make a second game this decade. Wow, what? I don't know. What are they doing? This this is product designer Greg Coomer talking to Famitsu. Uh, It's all in Japanese, so good luck. He said, this is a translation, he said, quote, we're not stopping making games at all. Valve has a lot of games in development. We will continue to release games. And then he went on to mention uh, specifically Half-Life and Portal games uh, coming in the future. I'd be down for a new IP. Also, don't care if you're making more Half-Life or Portal games. I don't give a shit. If Valve is making games and they're like, this is something this echoes a little bit coming from the new, you know, the New Zealand high school gymnasium leaks of 2021. Yes. uh, From our boy Gabe Newell, who was abandoned on the island, I guess. And he was just like, well, I got to talk to somebody about this. He was mentioning that they're ramping up game development and that it's, uh, you know, a priority that they've been sitting around on their hands for two decades and he's like we're gonna start moving projects along so i'm really excited what do you guys what do you think you think this is gonna because the way they do this type of shit like we could just wake up tomorrow and half-life part three is just on steam on the front page and they're like oh here it is we made this look what we did you the inter- it? That would break dude it would break yep, yep. St- you wouldn't be steam able to buy be- from the steam store yeah, yeah it would just collapse it'd just explode It'd be so cool. I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm happy for what Valve is doing. Um, I I, I hope they do some new IPs, but I, I want Portal Three. Kudos, kudos, kudos. All right, kudos is our positivity segment. We like to give a shout out to something awesome. Uh, this week, who has some kudos for us? I I got one. So. Uh, been uh, looking at some apple tv apple tv has some pretty good stuff on there i in my opinion uh we've been watching uh c on on apple tv S-E-E? like the S-E-A? vision a vision c c c vision that's still not helping c, me c world like my my eyeballs like c you world see? like S-E-E. c is in the letter c charlie Charlie, yeah. Charlie so, Vision. Char- so it's it's about Charlie. Um, it's uh, Jason Momoa is Charlie. See, see Charlie. See Charlie. I, think run. I saw a trailer for this because Jason Momoa always jumps out to me. So they they just finished season three, and that's it. That's they've completed the whole series. So you can start up watching now, binge all three seasons, and get the full story, and and you're done. Uh, just finished season one. It is one of the best things I've ever seen on television. Wow. Um, I, I, I really think Apple is knocking out of the park with their unique, you know, Apple originals. Um, so the premise is it's 500 years in the future. Humankind has lost the ability to see. 
everybody is okay. is blind. Everybody on on the planet's blind. So society collapsed. They don't go into why any of this happened because nobody. It's been lost. It's been five hundred years without anything new, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it takes place with Jason Momoa. He's a leader of a tribe that is basically just kind of surviving. That's that's their whole life is just basically surviving. And they're all blind. They don't really. They're all blind. And this is so crazy. And uh, his wife is giving birth to to twins as an army is is coming to basically wipe out their entire village. They're witch hunters. They they go out in search of people who can see. And burn them at the stake because they think they're they're witches. Okay. And so the the two babies are are believed to to be witches, and so. That's kind of the premise, the first part of the story. Um, I, I'd give anything away if, if I said anything really. Anymore. How can you tell us how they navigate? Do they have like do they use Stick. echolocation or they have sticks? So, yeah, so so they use they use sticks. They they're I mean any kind of other blind person you know would have you ever seen a blind person ride a motorcycle or uh, sorry not a motorcycle oh. but a, a bike a bicycle? It's the no. craziest thing. They use echolocation for. Uh, for riding a bicycle. I mean, not that's like every single cool blind concept. person could do that. Yeah, because that's what um, I thought. I've is seen like, people do that. It's so super crazy. It's like, um, oh. and uh, I mean, my I have an aunt who's blind, and she's mm-hmm. she's gone to the Olympics for blind archery. What? So cool. Blind archery? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she has a oh, silver goodness, medal or a or a and they they medal. use it. Yeah. If I remember correctly, they have a like a clicker or a sound that's right above the bullseye or where. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not fam- for it. I'm not too familiar of how it is, but, Crazy. but yeah, it's su- super cool. So, um, uh, yeah, it the the movement is is super interesting. The way they read, they tie knots on a on a string, and so that's how they actually read and pass messages and stuff um it's it's super cool it's totally unique i've never seen anything like it yeah uh, it's it's a must watch for sure huh. dude i like that that sounds that sounds and it's fun. jason momoa he's he there's some of the most brutal fight scenes i have ever seen do it's they really, do really a good, good job of selling that they are blind yes 100 percent. because that seems like the hardest that seems yeah. so hard to act that in yeah. an action movie. Well, I should say some people, I mean, I don't have a lot of experience with, with uh, you know, with blind people other than my aunt. Um, but she, she has a tendency to look up in, into the corners um, when she's, t- when she's talking to people. Um, sometimes the actors will fixate on a location, which I, I don't know how believable that is, but yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't done research, obviously, but dude, I was watching this mannerisms. last season, this most recent season of MasterChef, and they bring back one of the winners from yeah, the, one of the previous the, seasons. She's one of my favorites. I forgot she was she's completely blind and she won MasterChef. That's and rad. Like, I have so, to go back and watch awesome. that whole season because I can't remember. You don't? I, I, like, I don't remember how she did the plating. I, I do no doubt in my mind. You could do all so the good. cooking. You could do all the cutting and, and the simmering and all that stuff. You could do that, but man, the plating that would that blows my mind. I'd love to dude, spoiler alert. You know the challenge where they Gordon Ramsay makes a dish and they have to replicate it, flavor. Yeah, and she visual. did she won that. She, didn't she won it. I'm like, what the fuck? Senses are super heightened, man. Dude, she's for sure. It was so crazy. crazy. I yeah, she was my favorite winner because she was like so I was just cool. blown away all the time. Yeah, just the utmost respect. Like yeah. I I can't. So yeah, that sounds like a real cool show. Uh, C and C. it's on Apple TV. Yeah. Um, Peterson, do you have any kudos? Uh, no kudos for me. <clears throat> I've I just have... been revisiting old stuff, so I don't have any. You don't no redudos. Okay. Um, I have a brief kudos, and this one goes out. This is a personal kudos. This one goes out to my dad. Um, my dad has been helping me uh, recently with. I've been having some sprinkler issues. You guys don't know this about me. I hate sprinklers. Um, I just don't like irrigation. I don't like working with it. I have deep set trauma from when I was living in a duplex. And I just felt like 
it had very, very high water pressure. And for like a whole summer, every time I'd fix one head, it would transfer the pressure and explode another one. And it was like <laughs> so every annoying. it was like every couple <laughs> weeks, one day I'd just wake up at like three in the morning and I'd hear the, you know, the Splish sound of washed. running water. And I'd be out there at three in the morning with a headlamp, water spraying everywhere, just like such a nightmare. I hated it. So I hate sprinklers. Long story short, my dad has been helping me and been so nice because I get so frustrated sometimes. And we I had the craziest explosion of a sprinkler and my valve in my manifold broke. You guys know sprinklers. It's just such a nightmare. It was so like everything was just configured just so that cutting anything out was a nightmare. And we found out a real elegant solution and got that done today. And it was so much just so much stress off my mind um so yeah thanks dad you're the best awesome we heard about you in the alpha and played you in the beta you were a hot mess of the access So we put you down for years It's time to revisit It's time to revisit Revisiting hours are here uh, Right, revisiting hours. Peterson, did, we, did you just play a clip right there? It's, no, I, mean, it's that, made I just sung that live. Yeah, I, I made one, remember? It's yeah, the and it's awesome. Rock song, yeah. Yes. All right, um, you guys are welcome. Revisiting hours, let's do it, Peterson. <laughs> Tell us what it is. Okay, so this is crazy, but I have picked up and started playing Sea of Thieves again. So when did Sea of Thieves wow. come out originally? Dude, you, last time you played like Sea of Thieves, you were talking about 17. it with Spencer. Yeah, so Spencer and I played this week one when it came oh, out wow. on Xbox Game Pass. And I think it was still early access, all that. But we played it, and my primary gripe was just that there was nothing to do in the game. It was... We get a basic mission, and then we just kind of sail to it, to these empty islands, mm -hmm. fight a couple skeletons, and then uh, turn in the mission. It was just empty. The game was empty. We didn't come across other players. Nothing exciting happened. It was silly still, but I know the game has been through a lot since then. Uh, Danny uh, played a lot, plays a lot of Sea of Thieves. She's got a crew that they played with. Is she so still I, playing it? Do you see, still see her online and stuff? I don't. I we're not friends on Xbox, so I don't know. Oh yeah, because you get it because it's free on Game Pass, right? Yeah, it's on Game mm -hmm. Pass, so we just so doing nice. it on Xbox. So, so anyways, we've been playing Sea of Thieves. We started this week, and I have to say we have put in substantial amount of hours. I mean, we accidentally end up staying up till like two, two thirty every night playing Sea of Thieves, we want to just play all the time. So here's how the game is different than what it was before. So before it was very empty. Now uh, it does reward exploration. So you hop onto an island. There's islands and rocks everywhere. Like you can just always see them on the horizon. So you just sail to one. You can hop off. There's going to be something. You're going to find something. Whether it's just stuff for your ship like cannonballs or planks to repair holes in your ship when you run into stuff or get shot. Um, food for healing, whatever. Or you go on and you find treasure chests that you can turn in for gold. You find uh, there's still a lot of bad guys, so there's skeletons, ghosts. There's a bunch of different types of skeletons. Uh, and they don't necessarily tell you how to kill them. You just have to figure out, like, there was these ones that, they were attacking us and they were like ghost skeletons. They weren't corporeal until you had to hold up your lantern, which we found out the hard way after trying to kill these things. And when you shine Dang. light on it, then it becomes physical and That's you can kill it. of the Caribbean shit. So mm -hmm. one person has a lantern running around with the lantern while everyone else just hacking away at the, so there's a ton more to do. It's a lot more exciting. Um, 
uh, there's also like treasure maps that we find with like riddles on them. And it's like, go to this island and find a big rock, you know. And I mean, they're worded better than that, but you have to find a rock. Right. You have to play a tune on your little, you know, because they still have. If I don't remember, know if you remember this, but we used to, while you're sailing, me and Spencer would I like they're to, called shanties. Uh, you'd play a shanty and one person would pull out like a. Uh, what's it called? Like an accordion. The other person will pull out a banjo and then you pull out a drum and you're all playing the same song, but different parts to it. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty funny. Um, and uh, so you play a song, you know, and then the next clue appears, that sort of thing. It's like a treasure hunt. But also we've had some crazy adventures in Sea of Thieves. And I was telling JD about some of these. Uh, you, one night we see some people fighting and we're like some two ships. And the ship battles are long. It's not like a quick ship battle because it is not like quick maneuvering. You're like moving the sails because while I'm steering the ship, the other guys are uh, messing with the sails and, uh, you know, changing the sails, raising them, lowering them, turning them, um, bailing water out of the bottom of the ship, repairing holes, shooting the cannons. Right. So it's like a full crew doing stuff. And so, and you know, you're not making tight turns. And and so you're really like, it's about ship placement and maneuverability, but we come across two ships fighting. We're like, Hey, let's join. We go in, start taking some pot shots at this battle that's already happening. And then some of the guys yell to us because you can pull out like a bullhorn in the game and Mm -hmm. it's directional. So you yell it and you're like, he's, they're like, Hey, join us to let's, let's join up and take out this bigger ship. So we're like, all right, why not? We didn't have anything to lose. We didn't have any treasure on our ship. So we take out this big ship and they're like, hey, let's be allies. Guy jumps on our ship. We ally up. You can like create a temporary alliance. We ally up and another ship shows up that we're allied with. And we just go around the open seas, bullying people who have the Reaper flag flying, which means they want to do PVP. You can Mm -hmm. see them on your map. You know, they want to do PvP. So we just show up to these Reaper ships. And just destroy them. And yeah, three sh- you can't fight three ships. And we're just like, take them down within... Normally, the I mean, we've done battles that lasted 15, 20, 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. We would take out these Reaper ships in like 60 seconds. <laughs> you sink a ship, or are you just... The people on it are just floating in the ocean like idiots? Or what, what, what happens uh, if, after you if sink If they're it? on the ship, they'll die. Uh, they go down with it. Um... If you die, you just respawn back on your ship. So if I jump on the ship and just pull mm-hmm. out my sword and kill everyone on it, I got like 20, 30 seconds till they're back on the ship. Because oh. you respawn mm-hmm. onto the ship. Uh, you sink the ship. If they're on it, they'll die. You, They can jump off it. They did that several times. They jump mm-hmm. off the ship and just swimming in the ocean. And they would try <laughs> to jump on our ships. And, and we, had just, we had like 10 people, right? And so they're just, just like them. getting shot. Just everyone's shooting at them in the water. So you kill their ship and all of them, their ship respawns like somewhere else. Somewhere else, like, yeah. On the, like a, it, there's like plunder, there's like islands with like a, where you turn in all your gold and all that stuff. Is there a long term play with this game or is it kind of just drop in like Fortnite? You drop in with your friends, you go have some adventures and you go out. You're not buffing up a character, you're not leveling up or collecting treasure. So this is maybe, and, and I get it. I I totally get it, but this is my biggest complaint about the game is there's not, there's no stats. There is no stats. There's There's no no weapons. You don't find weapons that are better. Everything's just a skin. That's what threw me. I think when I played it and I was playing it solo, I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. Why? You shouldn't play it alone. That's what you shouldn't. No, no, no. Alone. It's not very fun. That was with the crew. It's a blast. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah, then we we get all this loot, and then we're sailing back to sell stuff, and then the freaking kraken shows up, and what happens is this? I mean, gigantic tentacles come up, and your ship is stuck. And again, we're new at this game; we have no idea what we're doing. We're like, yeah. So while we're in the middle of this fight, I'm like, somebody Google how to beat the kraken. <laughs> get on pirate Google, and like. You don't have time to Google because you're like one person was just dedicated to repairing and uh, bailing water out because that's how you mm-hmm. sink if the you know too much water gets in there. And one I was I one person was shooting the cannons. I mean it's crazy. And I've, I you know one of us was getting grabbed by the tentacles and pulled out into the ocean. 
Like it was wild. That is so funny. And it, we sunk. We lost our all our loot that we had. If you traded that loot, and what does it fucking get you? What do so you, you get, get from gold? That? So oh, essentially, I'm saving up gold to buy a ship. Oh, because the, then you get better ships. Well, and it's not a better ship. It's the same ship. It's just essentially my ship. I can name it. I can mm. customize it, and it's like it has more per- cannons, though, right? Like per- permanent no, customization. Oh. No, the cannons are dependent on the size of the ship. So there's, oh, uh, okay. Like you can get a big old ship with three sails and six cannons, but it's it also maneuvers a lot slower in the water. But you can take down little. If you catch up to a little ship, you're just gonna like, you know, fire just away, light it, light it up. And the little ship is only two people can be on it max, like. You, you can have a party of two. I guess other people could just jump on your ship and be there. But you can have a party of two on with that ship. There's like a two person, a three person and a four person ship. So, hmm. yeah, there, but there is nothing better. You can't like play the game for longer and be like, I got this better thing. So I imagine we'll bounce off of it fairly quickly. But in the meantime, we're having a ton of fun. Like battling other ships is a blast. It sounds uh, crazy. Fighting fighting skeleton ships is a blast. Even dying to the Kraken was a lot of fun. We d- we fought the Kraken two nights in a row, and it's just like a chance thing, and now it's happened two nights in a row, and we've lost both times, but we're getting better. You know what I mean? And so, I don't know. I imagine once we get to really good at it, we'll bounce off and play something else, but for the meantime, Sea of Thieves is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Although one of our crew members just gets drunk the whole time. Beautiful. It's, Perfect pirate. He, he just right gets in. drunk, runs around, and he's useless because he can't walk straight. He can't do anything. There's a yeah. chest that we found called the Thousand Grogs or something. You, When you're carrying it, you're like violently drunk. You can mm-hmm. barely walk. And you're trying oh to like God. sell it. Uh, you're like running with it on this island. It, it's a really goofy when you're drunk and you play the songs, they're all off key. Like you play it wrong. So like there's a lot of really silly little things in it like that, that just make it hilarious. Uh, but yeah, see if thieves, if you have game pass, you should try it with a crew. Do not play it by yourself. That seems horrible. Also don't play it with randos. So I've heard that sucks too. Like they just vote to put you in the brig and then you're just locked up. You can't do anything. That sounds so, less yeah. than great. Yeah. So anyway, Sea of Thieves, I, you should play it with the crew. If you've got a crew, do it because it's a lot of fun. Okay, cool. And do we have a sound clip for this thing? I think so. Well, spin it maybe. And now from the 3-Bit Gamer Show, a game review. Well, hold on one second. It's not necessarily just a, a game review. It's actually an interview. Uh, okay. And now, from the 3-Bit Gamer Show, an interview. Well, no, no, no. It's kind of both of those things smashed together. I quit. Just call it whatever you want, then. All right. Interview review is where two of us review the other person. Inter- interview. <laughs> In- sorry, We're going to interview Aaron's review, review out, of his, out of him. Mm. Um, We're going to pull played, a review know, out of Aaron, rude. whether he likes yeah. it or not. Yeah, we're pulling it out of you. Um, this is Aaron played a game called Gloomhaven, named normally a tabletop game, and it's been digitized. Now, what's the platform again, Aaron? The uh, it's on Steam. This is on Steam. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I did play this and kind of review it for a dice game. I didn't like it, so I'm very interested to see Aaron's take on this because I I just couldn't get into it. Yeah, that's actually my first question for the inner review. Knowing that this is Gloomhaven is a famously huge, um, literally heavy uh, tabletop board game. It has so much going on, so many moving parts, literally and figuratively, uh, that it is known for that complexity. And so I'm curious, uh, I, w- I would think inherently a digital version would be easier. Um, but as a complete newbie who's never played gloomhaven that's me uh how long would this take me to pick up i get gloomhaven on steam and i just start going how 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 what am i in for oh as as far as uh learning how to play and actually playing it kind of thing getting up having a good time yeah uh it doesn't take long at all 
oh, wow. it, it'll it'll take you real it'll take you about an hour be, <laughs> like to to feel like okay i understand how to play mm-hmm. uh because you have to just dive in and understand and, and fail to really get how to play the game uh because there's lots of mistakes that people make um that i think makes it not to be fun uh, because it's not very user, it's not very beginner friendly of, uh, yeah. So you kind of have to have somebody there to teach you how, like what you probably should do. Um, Cause you could fail really quickly and not understand why kind of thing. And so then okay. it, would, it would definitely ruin your, your gameplay experience. Do Are there like, like tutorials and tool tips throughout the game? Like, uh, I, like I didn't the play the tutorial because I, I mean, I already knew how to play the game. Um, but uh, it's it's there's there's tool tips like you hover over stuff. Okay. It'll tell you what to do because oh, okay. there's because there's icons and stuff um, uh, like benefits and, and disadvantages and stuff like that. You, it'll it'll tell you what what status effect is on your character kind of thing. Um, it's so it's pretty simple. Um I mean, I, maybe I should just kind of give an overview of what the game actually is for people. Yeah, people do don't it. know what it is. So Gloomhaven is a turn based strategy game for one to four players. You control a character um, and you start in the city of Gloomhaven and you are going out and doing missions as a mercenary. So it start there's there's a big old campaign mode. I don't even know how long it is. I think. I think there's a mission book that's like over a hundred missions. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like there's side missions as well uh, in the main story and on your turn. So the first map, first mission, you there's like flavor text. It's kind of, since it's a board game, it's very text-based, but they have a really good voice actor that does uh, a lot of the main mission stuff. Um, you go to the mission and then you're shown a grid with, uh, with, enemies and your characters basically each character is very very unique they're all completely different it start you start the game off with six characters that you can choose from and you can build a party one to four people and the game is uh kind of gets set up depending on how many players you play with so one there's only going to be certain enemies if you have one character there's going to be more for two three and four so it gets progressively more maybe not more difficult, but there's going to be, it's going to scale with your party uh, or else you just steamroll the entire game yeah. on your turn. You have a hand of cards. Uh, it depends on the character you choose. It could be eight to 12 cards that you're choosing from. And each card has a top ability and a bottom ability. And you're only choosing one. So on your turn, you're going to choose two of those eight cards and you're going to have one card be the top ability and the other card will have to be the bottom ability. You can't have two top abilities. It's really kind of weird. So they're separated by text on the cards. The top ability is going to be majority uh, attack actions and the bottom ability is going to be majority of move actions. So you can move and then attack kind of thing on your turn. Mm -hmm. Later on, you'll have some cards that actually have attack on both bottom and top. Um, each so um, and so, you're kind of just doing that. There's going to be cards that will have like a burn icon. You burn the card permanently to play that card. But when you're completely out of cards, your character is exhausted. Not dead. They're just exhausted and they're out for the entire round for the entire map that scenario so that's where people get into trouble because burning cards are for a very big action like you're doing something very very powerful so if you're constantly burning cards you're you're dramatically reducing the amount of turns you have so on my turn i'm playing two cards putting them into my discard pile i go through all eight of my cards doing the same thing Then I do a rest action. I permanently burn one of my cards in my discard pile. And then I draw, I have my hand of seven cards and I choose two of those seven cards and then keep going through all the seven cards 
then I burn one of the seven cards and then I have six left over basically. So when you're only down to one card, that's, that's it game, the game over for that character. So, uh, people did the math. You can have up to like 40 actions if, if you don't burn any cards, but as soon as you burn one card, it dramatically reduces the amount of actions you have for that character. Hmm, So, um, so you go through, it's just like, it's an RPG. So you go through the scenario, you complete whatever mission, and then you go back to town. You, uh, use your gold, your XP to level up your character. You put on armor, you have weapons, you have small item items that allow you to, uh, get discarded cards back into your hand, uh, give you more health kind of thing. Um, and the, the biggest, the coolest thing is upgrading your characters because every level up, you get two new cards to choose from, and they're a lot better than your starting deck. So you can only have a, a maximum card, uh, in, in your deck. So you have to remove one to add a, add a better one into your deck. Um, and yeah, it's throw some questions. What questions do you got? Oh man. What? <laughs> level of gamer do I need to be to enjoy this? Like if I don't, so I, I mean, I look behind you on your shelf. You have a shit ton of tabletop games. You are the tabletop master, certainly of this podcast. Um, if I'm, you know me, I love tabletop games, but I'm not as uh, well versed as you are in them. Is this game for me or is this just for Go- Gloomhaven and tabletop junkies? I think this game is was made for PC. I, okay. I think if if you did not know this was a board game, it's it's perfect tactical turn based RPG. It's if you like those types of games, this is perfect. As far as other turn based tactical games go, because you've played a bunch of them, mm-hmm. um, where does this fall in? Uh, the the range of like difficulty, the range of uh, replayability, uh, entertainment, that sort of thing. Because I think like XCOM are the most well known uh, and like lauded version of these. I think. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how much replayability XCOM has. I've only finished yeah. the campaign. I don't. I think that's about it. Right? There's not yeah. much more than that. Uh, I'm about 30 hours into Gloomhaven and I've scratched the surface. Yeah. Like I did there's... read while you were talking, I looked up on how long to beat. If you've never used that website, it says to do the main campaign, the average is 105 hours. <laughs> yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah. That's wow. it's, it's super crazy. Cause there's, there's six starting characters and you can unlock like another 10 characters. Yeah. It says there's 17 unique mercenaries. Oh, so 11 more characters. Yeah. And you have to, you you have to complete specific things in the game in order to unlock those characters. So each character has, has like a life path. Once you finish that life path, once they, once they've completed their, their life goal, you can unlock a new character and then start leveling up that character. It's, it's pretty nuts. So, um, what was your what was your exact question? So, yeah, it, it, where where would you rank it in terms of like difficulty level and like uh, entertainment factor? I mean, because there's a bunch of games like this. Right? Yeah, it, dude, it, it's it's honestly it's super high. Like, uh, it's it's really really high. You just played the f- Warhammer one, right? Uh huh. How yeah. does it, is this, would you say you like this better than the Warhammer? I, I like this better um, because, I mean, the Warhammer one is really, really good. Uh, but this one, it just, the the level of strategy that's involved in this is way higher okay. than, than Warhammer. Not to a complexity level because you're just trying to figure out, okay, how do I maximize my turn of moving and attacking and positioning myself so I'm not getting smacked in the face by five dudes. Yeah. Um, so you you see what the enemy is going to do on their turn because the depending on the card you play, it'll put you into a one to a ninety nine, uh, like uh, uh, turn order, right? So the enemy could have you know an eighty seven turn order, 
and they're going to move into attack. So you want to be in position so they're they're not moving into you, attacking you, and then just murdering you yeah. uh, immediately. So so there's a lot of tactics that are involved in the game, but they're manageable. Um, so it's very you just have to think more. I feel like in 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 Warhammer, I'm just like okay, I have three actions. I'm just gonna move, attack, shoot maybe use a grenade ability or something like that yeah, yeah. and kill something. And that's, it's very fast paced. Gloomhaven's a little slower because like each mission I'm looking about 40 minutes per, per scenario. So it, so it takes a while, okay. but it's so satisfying. I was, so when I started, I play on, I played on normal mode. Normal modes really actually pretty hard yeah. if you've never played the game before. So easy mode is, is a little bit better but your characters also start off really kind of kind of weak cuz i mean they're they're starting decks and the way the damage works i don't know i don't think it explains this in the in the actual game but in the board game you have a deck of cards of 20 cards for your damage it's supposed to signify rolling a d20 yeah but but it's a but it's a deck of 20 cards and they all have like negative 1 0 plus 1 plus 2 a critical hit critical miss kind of thing so that yeah. you're rolling your modifiers for attacking um you can modify that deck you can put more plus twos in there you can yeah, remove man. a bunch of negative ones so you're modifying that deck so when you attack a dude you're hitting him for more and and stuff like that doing different status effects on on the enemy um so you get uh, progressively more powerful when i started the game i lost this first scenario maybe five six times <laughs> But you get all the XP, you get all the gold from that mission. Oh, okay. So you go back to town, buy upgraded equipment, you level up your dudes. I think I got to like level two or three on on some guys. So it's like a I... rogue light in that in that regard. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it all starts out the same. Like it's the same mission. You're just replaying the mission. Yeah. But you've already come, you know, gathered some stuff along. But there's the way. persistent rewards for that. Yes. Yeah. You're not constantly getting smack in the face. Like it's not just, yeah, you, Try yeah again. exactly. Yeah. It, right. Exactly. And hope, hopefully like the RNG is really not that bad. Like, um, cause it, cause some games could be super swingy. XCOM is super swingy. <laughs> yeah. Like that yeah. game really punishes you. And it's just like, okay, I just need, I just need not to miss. And then of course you miss and then you die. Yeah. That's, that's how I, that's I had that worst. in battle tech quite a bit too. It's like I'd go into a battle easy win. And then they would like immediately kill one of my pilots in one shot. And you're like, yeah, well, there's a headshot. Okay, I can't do Damn. that again. Yep. Exactly. Um, okay. The question I always like to ask, what's your biggest nit about the game? What do you, what's your least favorite thing about it? Um, I, I don't know if I really have any super negatives about the game or even a, like a negative, maybe um, not knowing how to unlock the characters, maybe some of them. Okay. Uh, Cause I, I completed, I don't know if it was just, I completed so many main story missions. I unlocked one character, but it was just like, there was a small little cinematic, a new character was available to join my party and which was kind of cool because it was just like a nice surprise. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I get to pick a new character to join the party. Um, maybe that. Is it because yeah. they want it to feel like a, like a surprise, do you think? Because yeah. in, in the board game, is, it, is, is that the scenario? Like you might unlock someone you might and you don't know? Yes. Is that how it works? It, it's, they keep, it, keep everything very hidden in the board game. Got like it. everything okay. is in like white you know boxes don't tr don't open this don't spoil yeah. it yeah. and it just has a symbol of the character and that's it Got and then and the mission will have at the end or um your life paths will have like uh you'll unlock this symbol for a character and, but you don't know what it is okay got it okay so it, it is co-op co-op's pretty fun um it's it's some you you try not to like over strategize when you play co-op just just say i'm going to attack this guy you attack this guy hopefully we kill somebody try to keep it as easy as possible but it's pretty fun co-op for sure okay. yeah i own it so maybe you and i should 
you can walk me through it because yeah, I only had like an hour in and I w- I think I was like, this game's too hard and yeah. uh, quit. Yeah. Just you don't burn any of your cards. Just I think, play. I think that was in the tutorial too, by the way, in the tutorial oh, really? mission said, where I was like, this is so hard. I can't. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> but so, like I said, I mean, you might fail a mission, but you still get the golden XP and uh, just try to buy some stuff to help you along the way. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, JD? I just have one and you probably kind of already addressed it, but who would hate this game? Like who should just never even look at it? Kind of a deal. Uh, If you're looking for a short game, it's not a short game or quick experiences. Quick. Yeah. uh, Yeah. It's it's high strategy. You're just going to be sitting at your computer for a couple hours figuring. Yeah, this out. it's not action packed. the The animations are really. They did a really good job with the it game. It looks the good. Animations are good. Yeah, the voice acting is good. The story is super interesting. It's like you're trying to figure out who the big bad is. You know, putting you on these missions. There's like growths and everything coming out of Gloomhaven. I bought the oh expansion God. already for it. Um, nice. it's called love with a uh, lion lair something the something of the lion yeah uh it's the inn it's named jaws named of the, the lion inn. jaws of the lion yeah it's named after the inn that's in gloomhaven um so that has like five new characters that you can play as uh which is which is pretty cool jaws of the lion is is a board game um it's but it's like a separate experience it's supposed to be like an introductory to gloomhaven uh, oh. So it's a, it's a, it's like a simple version of Gloomhaven. Is that the if you one to, I own? If you were to pick up the board game, I pick up that version first because it's 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 very it's a lot easier. It's easier to get into. Yeah, I think I own that one, and it's when he says easier to get into, it's not easy to get into it's easier because I have I think that's what I have I've got the board game and I opened it up and I was like oh no this is way too much reading for me I need <laughs> someone to show me this I can't read through this instruction manual because it was still very big yeah the the game is really not hard it's like a 10 minute ex- explanation and then you're into it I mean the biggest thing in the board game is just setting everything up because you're yeah. setting up the rooms and the tiles and the enemies and oh I've seen people characters. set it up and yes it is it is they're like an hour setting up type of thing they're like yeah opening stuff pull out the huge box that's like a treasure chest and just, I would uh, not I would not recommend owning this board game. <laughs> I, I really I really wouldn't because it's, it's a so lifestyle funny. board game yeah. who in the hell. So I spent 30 hours on a digital version. Yeah, that's a, that's the equivalent of like three times that amount <laughs> yeah. for a board game. <laughs> oh, or more like. Yeah, you take for granted how easy things are in video games compared to like the a tabletop version of that, especially when they have over 100 scenarios. Yeah. No, no fucking person's going to go through over a hundred scenarios in a board game Dude, unless you're crazy. insane or the designer. Yeah. The designer's a little crazy, but yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven. And oh, so, so it's currently priced for thirty four ninety nine. I've already put 30 hours into it. No problem. So I think it's a very, very good value even at that price. And it really, it, it, it does go on sale. On sale. Yeah. yeah, I bought it on sale. It goes on sale. Okay. Um, okay, we'll check out Gloomhaven on Steam. Uh, thank you for the interview. And we're moving on. Dice, dice, dice of destiny. All right, Dice of Destiny is this fun game we play at the end of every episode. We roll a six-sided dice to who see who will be responsible for the Dice of Destiny, a 20-sided dice with 20 different game genres on it. Uh, then they roll a six-sided dice for a price. They find a game in that genre for that price, pick it, play it, review it. Last couple weeks ago, Peterson rolled a $30 mystery game. He picked a game called Strange Horticulture, and it sounds like you're done with it. You beat it. What's up? Yeah, so Strange Horticulture. <laughs> I Okay, first, like I mentioned, uh, when I was searching for the game, I did not want to play a horror game. This was not where I was at. That's not where I'm at 
mentally, I just wasn't feeling it. So it was hard to find a mystery game, but I happened across this game, which came out this year, came out in January of this year of 2022. Um, and so that kind of met all my criteria that I always try to pick something new. I usually try to pick something newer, um, kind of interesting, a little bit different. So strange horticulture is a mystery game <clears throat> where you have taken over ownership of a plant shop called strange horticulture in this, in this crazy town, in this kind of dark world, uh, it's it, nothing in the world seems pleasant except for your plant shop is like a bright spot in this miser in the miserable world. Uh, and the game takes place all in one screen. That's it. There's like one screen and that's it. You've got on the screen, you've got your table where you can place a map or you've got a book where that like keeps track of all the plants that you're aware of. Mm -hmm. um, and also right above that, you've got a, some shelves with all of your plants on them, the plants you own. You've got the shelves, the plants that you own, you don't know what they are. Uh, cause you came in, you just took over this plant from like your uncle or something like that. <laughs> and so you're like, I'm not a plant, but I don't know anything about these. So you've got these plants that you start with and you collect them along the way by doing various things. Um, but you never know what they are. It never says, here's this plant and this plant is called this. You've got your plant sitting there and then you've got your book with like a real basic picture of a plant and a description and what it's used for. And you use those. Oh, and, and you've got a magnifying glass tool that you kind of drag the plant to, and it'll give a very basic description. Like, um, this, after touching this plant, your fingers are a little numb or this plant smells this, this, the scent is very intoxicating something. It's very basic, but it gives you enough information where you can identify which plant is which, because as you go through the game, you, you go in and you have customers who will come visit your shop and that's kind of the right side of the screen. You click a little bell. You've got a cat sitting on your counter. You can pet it. And then you get this little, <laughs> you ring the bell and a customer shows up and they're like, oh man, here's what's going on in my life. I need this type of plant. And all the plants are like really exotic. You know, they've, it's not like real life plants. They've got some sort of like magical properties or something, you know, that they're used for. And uh, they say they will tell you what kind of plant they want, the name of the plant, and you have to try to give them the right one. If you give them the wrong one, you get these like fear points uh, where your character is, <clears throat> it's called misery level or something like that. It's like you're stressed out or something like that where you've messed up. And now if that goes up, so if you max out your misery for a single day, then you you have to play a little mini game to get back into the to start the day over and they're always kind of fun they're just little puzzles uh but they're they're kind of amusing and entertaining but yeah you go in and uh you fill the customers requests and you've got labels that you can so once you figure out what the plant is you can you put a label on it so it never feeds you any of that you have to figure it out. And if you don't label it yourself, you won't know what that is because, <laughs> I mean, there's like 77 plants or something in total. So you're never going to remember. You'll just never be able to keep it straight. So you, it's up to you to label them yourself. There's different color labels. Um, and throughout the days as you're going, there's this kind of mystery. So this is the mystery side of it. There is a mystery that's happening in this town uh, some sort of creature is killing people. And of course, everyone's trying to figure it out and they need your help because uh, they need, you know, there's like a detective who's trying to solve this mystery and he needs certain plants to help him. And, and then eventually it's a plant based solution <laughs> to help kind of take this, take this creature down. Um, but all of it happens via, you get you get like clues like people. There's a mailman that comes every day who will give you a clue and then you open up your map 
and you want to you travel to so you click where you want to travel to but again it all happens on the same screen so it says oh i went to this place and i found a new plant or i found pages mm -hmm. about new pages about plants or i uh found this clue that will lead me to another plant and so you just pick up clues and it'll take you to a place where you get more information a couple times i hadn't solved the riddles and the customer would ask about a plant that I didn't have, a plant that mm -hmm. I didn't have uh, access to. So I realized, oh, shoot, I've got to solve these. The game does do it, it doesn't hold your hand in terms of like identifying the plants. You have to do that on your own. But there is like a clue section. If you get stuck, you're not stuck forever. It's going to just like, hey, is you click on I need a clue. And it's like, why don't you try taking a look at this thing? You know, and then you're like, oh, got it. Some of the riddles are kind of tough. Uh, so there is some challenge to it. It's not hard enough to where I was stumped because I did beat the game. And it took me, I, it says I've got six hours in it, but some of that I just had the game open. Um, so I oh, bet God. it took me about oh, wow. five hours. I to, like that. <laughs> yeah. I bet it took me about five hours to beat. Uh, but I will say... What a joy this game was to play. I beat it in one day, which shows you oh, how wow. into it I was. Because, I mean, any game, five hours in one day is a lot. Um, I beat it in one day, and I was into it. I was feeling it. I was, like, having fun with it. It never got tedious or boring, which you, you think it could. Because you're, like, reading through this book, finding the plant, labeling it. It seems like it could get tedious. It didn't. It, it kept it very interesting, uh, which is no small feat for, again, a game like this uh, built by a small studio, uh, short little experience, very unique. Um, so, I, yeah, I just really enjoyed everything about this game. I didn't like my nits that I had about it are so little uh, like this is just like, ah, man, if I if I was labeling my plant like it. I wanted more label colors or I wanted more <laughs> shelf space, you know, that yeah, sort of thing. Like minor. there was, there's so little, it, it's not even worth mentioning. So this game I picked up on steam. It is $15. Uh, I would buy it for, I bought it for 15. I don't regret that at all. If, if you're only minorly interested in just like this short little experience, dude, it'll go on sale. It's a small indie game. It'll go on sale at some point. But uh, very interesting. I'm not going to say I like highly recommend it because it wasn't like I, I wasn't I didn't like beat it. And I was like thinking about it afterwards. I was like, I beat it. And I was like, yeah, that was cool. That was fun. It wasn't it didn't stick with me like maybe like a Doki Doki Literature Club. It wasn't oh, okay. thrilling like maybe some of the other uh, it wasn't exciting to play. But. Uh, it didn't have like a feel good ending. Like I played this game called uh, Chuck and it was about like a little Chuck. girl's adventures and mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't like feel good like that at the end. You know, there wasn't a lot of like mental gymnastics you had to do like playing into the breach or something. I'm just looking at my past list of dice of destiny games. So sure. did it add a ton to like, was I thrilled? No. Did I enjoy it? Yes. Am I like ranting and raving about this game? No, it was fine. Honestly, if it goes on sale for five bucks, buy it for five bucks type of thing. Um, that's kind of the recommended price points. But I enjoy, I enjoyed it. I loved it. If I had to compare it to a food, I would compare it to uh, like a a mushroom in uh, Mario. Because it's just Interesting. like a, it's Meta. like it's like a, it's plant, right? I was trying to think of like a, a fictional plant that uh, we don't know. You don't know what it tastes like going into this. You don't know what this game's gonna be. Um, you don't even know how how you're gonna enjoy it. But it ended up, you know, being good, doing good for me. It's kind of like the Mario's and mush the mushrooms in Mario. It's a fictional thing. We don't know what they taste like. You know, we you know we don't even know what it is, but. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. So it's called Strange Horticulture. Cool. Well, that means we got a re-roll. Aaron, I assume you want in on this. Let's do it, man. 
Yeah. Okay, then we're going to go uh, Peterson 1 2. I will be 3 4, and Aaron will be 5 6. All right. Give us that roll. It's a five. Aaron. Aaron, Ooh, you are, are Aaron, you, dude, you show up, you get dice every time you come. I know, right? Yeah. Let's do it. You really do. Okay. Here we go on that 20. Here we go. 15 is an. <laughs> what, what is dating it? Game? Oh, gosh. Here it's we go. An anime. Ah! <laughs> oh, it's an anime. Yeah, anime exactly. game. So, anime is off the nice. board, and puzzle is on deck again. Dude, be, um, I I can't wait for Aaron's search for an anime game that is not uh not porn porno. based. So <laughs> have fun with that. Yeah. So <laughs> let's see, Aaron. Let's see, Aaron. Anime and the price fifty bucks. Oh, so jeez, these games are not fifty bucks. So <laughs> you're less. Dude, spend all 50. Spend your whole budget. Actually, some of them are. Dude, I'm looking at anime games right now on Steam that have that tag. And dude, it's like $49.99, Yeah, baby. What? You're going to need With all in-game of purchases that money. probably too, right? <laughs> well, yeah, you got to get the booby DLC. Yeah, yeah, booby and DLC. And the pack. Yeah. Different I outfits. I don't even think DLC, boobies are DLC. That's just a given at this point. Oh, it just yeah. comes with the purchase. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. This is a list I can't believe that I have on there. very few games in. This is fantastic. I'm excited <laughs> to see what you pick. I bet you find something good. I mean, I'm Peterson sure. ended up, despite himself, playing and enjoying uh, Persona 5 quite a bit last time we this came up. Dude, so. and, and I also, I've had this one twice, I think, because I also Shit. played Epic Battle Fantasy, Epic Fantasy oh, Battle 5. Oh my god, why did you play Dude, that It's shit? so good, though. I would play it again. That's the thing. Like, that game was That's so funny. good. So, you can find a good one. It might take a minute, but you can find one. Yeah, I think okay. I actually Hi. already have one. So, yeah, there so you go. Aaron cool. will have a pick for us next week for his $50 anime game. Uh, right. That's it. To play us out, we've got some sea shanties or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, from Sea of Thieves. Peterson's gonna throw up there. You're gonna love it. You're gonna hate it. It's gonna be the drunk person, way off key. Yep. All right. Well, that's all I got. Thanks for hanging out. I'm JD logging off. This is Peterson going AFK. Aaron rolling out. Peterson Productions. Oh, yeah.